Well, David French is writing about exactly this challenge in a piece for the New York Times. And, and David, it's entitled, of course, What It Would Mean to Treat Hamas Like ISIS. And in it, David, you discuss some of the difficulties Israel faces in trying to dismantle the terror group, one being what you call the concept of distinction. And you write in part this, distinction requires soldiers to separate themselves from civilians by wearing uniforms, for example, or by fighting from marked military vehicles. It prohibits militaries from fighting from places like hospitals, schools, and mosques. Hamas disregards the principle of distinction. Its fighters take aim from civilian buildings while wearing civilian clothes and using civilian vehicles. This presents an attacking military with serious targeting problems. It is easy to identify, say, an armored personnel carrier as a military vehicle. But what if there are four Toyota Tacomas in the street and only one is full of Hamas fighters? When Hamas abandons the principle of distinction, then Hamas is responsible for the civilian damage that results. If Hamas fights from a hospital or stores munitions in a hospital, damage to that hospital is Hamas's responsibility. And that repeats itself many times over, David. You talk about, unlike Russia and versus Ukraine, Israel wants to follow the rules of war, but Hamas doesn't. Right. Hamas is their one of their tactics is not to follow the rules of war. The reality of Hamas is that they are they use civilians as a military asset. In other words, the presence of civilians they use as a protective means so that when Israeli troops or when Israeli armored vehicles go into uh, a street, often the Israelis will have to take and receive the first shot to know where Hamas is. And I compared this to the challenge that Iraqi and American forces faced in Mosul in 2016. Mm -hmm. They began to retake it from ISIS. And that took more than 100,000 troops, nine months to clear the city of Mosul. Mm -hmm. And sadly, thousands of civilians died because ISIS treated civilians the same way that Hamas treats civilians. And those deaths were ISIS's responsibility just like right now, the risk to civilians is Hamas's responsibility because Hamas is hiding amongst civilians. So, David, let's get your thoughts on what these next 24 to 40 hours might look like. We, the Israeli government has ordered the northern half of Gaza, which includes Gaza City, for everyone there to evacuate. That's more than a million people. The U.N. has asked them to reverse that order, saying it's simply not possible. Uh, that would lead to a, a massive humanitarian crisis. Um, what would... What are your fears there? And what would your advice be to the Biden White House as to how they try to message very much Israel's right to right to respond, but also worry about what could happen next? Yeah, what's trying what's happening here is very clear is that Israel is trying to deny Hamas the use of civilians as human shields. And so if you look back at America's war against ISIS, for example, many times civilian populations fled, for example, fled from Asia. <clears throat> When it was retaken or fled from other cities. But then when Mosul happened, many the civilians largely weren't permitted to flee by ISIS. And so getting civilians to flee the scene of fighting is an attempt at a humanitarian gesture here. It's an attempt at a humanitarian move as difficult and horrible as that is. Because what is also difficult and horrible is fighting block by block in a city where civilians are kept there. Uh, essentially as prisoners, for example, by ISIS in Mosul or by Hamas in Gaza. So there's no good option here once Hamas embeds itself in a civilian population. What that order is trying to do is to get civilians out of the zone of fighting, as has happened in other cities in the Middle East at other times. But it is so incredibly difficult. And again, this is because of what Hamas has done. It is because right. Hamas embeds it itself in the civilian population and essentially says, come and get us. Uh, that's what ISIS did in Mosul, and the U.S. military with its Iraqi allies did, in fact, go and get ISIS and fought them block by block, street by street, until ISIS was ultimately defeated.